They're barely visible to the naked eye, but they pack a hefty punch. Northwest Hardbeer Spur Dam continues to be plagued by hyacinth, an invasive plant that robs the water of vital oxygen, suffocating fish and turning the dam into an overgrown eyesore. But a little insect dubbed the hyacinth hopper is showing promising results in clearing the dam of this aggressive South American weed. They are the plant's only natural enemy and have been imported to go to work and finally clear the Harties Dam. So Govan went and he donned himself some waders to find these hyacinth hunters. Amid luxury golf estates and yachts moored next to mansions, a battle is brewing on the surface of the Hartbeespoor Dam between a plant and a bug. On one side, a waterweed. On the other, its natural enemy, a three millimeter insect whose only job is to chomp away at it, killing it one bite at a time. Water hyacinth on Hartbeespoor Dam in the northwest has become surprisingly politicized. The plant is fed by sewage pollution in the dam. Rich in nutrients, it makes the weed double its mass every two weeks. And its exponential growth has wreaked havoc on the local tourism industry. We took a boat cruise, but we almost got stuck in the hyacinth. That's becoming so common here in Hartis. Professor Julie Kutsia runs Rhodes University's Water Weeds Biocontrol Program. It's a political system. There's a lot of people who rely on this dam for businesses. There's all these beautiful estates around here. And so the policy at the time was to keep water hyacinth away through herbicidal spray. There was no more budget allocated to, to spraying the water hyacinth. So by the middle of 2017, the dam was covered with water hyacinth. A decade ago, she led a research team to Argentina where the hyacinth originates from, apparently brought here by people who liked the flowers. The scientists looked for anything in its native home that could control the weed. A plant hopper called Megamelis scutellaris showed promise. We wanted to see it in its new home in Hartis, where it's shown single-minded focus. You guys have gone to South America to fetch the hopper. Yeah? Exactly. These insects can only feed on water hyacinth. There's nothing else that they can complete their life cycle on, so they can't um, lay eggs, they can't develop. Look, 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 there's, there's a Megamelis with, with wings. Do you see that little guy? Oh my gosh, I can't see. There. All oh, right. They're harmless. Look how cute they are. That's the bomb squad. Mahali's Water, the water board in charge of the dam, says a year ago, the hyacinth covered 50% of Hartis. This month, it's down by at least 20%. The end of summer, we're looking at around 10%. Then over winter, it's not growing. Does that make the hopper the most effective solution for the hyacinth at Hartis? Yes. Okay. So we're Have calling it an inundative biocontrol program. So we're inundating these plants as frequently as possible. The sap-sucking bug pierces the plant's cells, making it waterlogged, reducing its buoyancy and rotting its leaves. Once they turn brown, the hopper's job is done. So this is a great example of what Megamelis scutellaris actually does, the hyacinth hopper. You can see that the plants are brown. It means that they're dying. And the fact that these other plants are growing on top of it means that once the wind blows them apart, they'll sink. Because the hoppers only live for 80 days, Julie's team set up a breeding program with seven satellite stations around the dam for a year-round supply of bugs that they carry to the hyacinth in buckets. It's fairly simple. A greenhouse, a few tanks, dam water and hyacinth. And they're breeding these hyacinth hoppers all year round. But this is what it takes to keep these plants off the dam. But the key to success comes from the residents around here, tending to them. 
In December alone, the team, with residents volunteering, released 160,000 hoppers on the dam. If this were merely a good news story about nature providing solutions to nature's problems, it would end here. But it's far more complex than that. The humble hyacinth hopper is not without its critics. Mahali's water spokesperson, David Mahai. We can wake up tomorrow and there's no hyacinth, right? But your raw water quality remains a concern. Our problem has been that sections of the media are purporting the success exclusively to the existence of the hoppers. But you are saying... But the hopper played a large role in getting it down to 20%. We acknowledge the role of the hopper. However, it is not only the effort of the hoppers being around here. Mahali's water was given 77 million rand to fix the dam. The hopper team got none of that. But Mahali's water is more concerned about addressing the source of pollution upstream, the enormous quantities of raw effluent from dysfunctional sewage plants and industries illegally flooding the rivers that feed into the dam. And that feeds the hyacinth. This water comes from Gaute. Right. This is the dirtiest. People fish here. The history of Hartes is the history of tourism. Correct. Now... But you're saying that this is actually the dirtiest raw, body of water. Raw water in the country, yes. Mahali's Waters Professor Van Gwede Masindi oversees their water quality lab tests in the rivers upstream from the dam to pinpoint polluters. are supposed to face fines and even imprisonment, but the professor is reluctant to name names. Actually, what is not happening is an enforcement and also monitoring is not taking place, which is the biggest challenge. Which municipalities? I wouldn't be specific. This... I can guess if you want. Okay. Is it the city of Joburg? The city of Joburg, city of Twane. Northern Works, city of Twane is there as well. Also, we have... Mighty a Bay municipality? Well. Yes, also the, the, they have a wastewater treatment facilities, they have main halls and all that. Anyone that I missed? No, no, I think you've covered everything. In other words, it's up to local municipalities to police the pollution and because they're failing, Artis is paying the price. Why don't you just take these guys to court? The enforcement lies with the office of the minister. Mahali's Water has handed this evidence to the Department of Water and Sanitation. To date, no city officials, wastewater managers or company directors have ever been charged. But Mahali's Water has a plan. We want to maintain it at less than 5% in these three years. We are tailored a, an integrated uh, system or technology or pack of technologies that we believe they will turn around the situation that we experience in here in Adair. They awarded several tenders. One is for litter traps to catch rubbish coming down the rivers to be installed in the next few months. Another is nanobubble technology, pure oxygen injected into the water to cleanse it. Tests in a much smaller dam showed great success within months. Possibly the most controversial project is the removing of the hyacinth by hand or machine and turning it into fertilizer. Great for jobs, the only snag is that the pollution makes the hyacinth potentially toxic. The good thing about it is that we take the hyacinth and we use it for the production of fertilizers. Well, is, is that really good? It's very good. Because but, the, but the dam has heavy metals in it and then that stays behind in the compost. Is that really good for people? We're not really sure, but I believe because they are certified, the product has been tested and is complying with the regulatory framework. Yes. Mahali's Water would only consider funding the hoppers if Julie can address their questions about the layer of dead plant matter at the bottom of the dam once the hyacinth sinks. As they get waterlogged, they push down and they get heavy and the plant... It sinks. It sinks. Surely that's not good either. These plants are going to sink anyway. We are dealing with the symptom. We are not yeah. dealing with the cause. No one's focusing on what percentage of what's at the bottom of this dam is composed of 
water hyacinth, and all the stuff that's coming in from Joburg. But even if the hoppers win the looming showdown, the plan is not to completely eradicate the hyacinth, just to keep it under control. Because in this toxic ecosystem, it helps control the poisonous, cancer-causing blue-green algae underneath it. Of course, if the water quality improves, this potentially greater risk might go away. And perhaps that's the best the residents can hope for. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.